I, I am coming to you from balmy San Diego. Why are you San Diego? Yes. Why? Why? Because Dan had a work thing. <coughs> and we had some airline miles, so I decided to play trophy wife. And take a trip to San Diego for free. So he did all his hustling today, and I ate room service, and we're going to go to the zoo and see the hippos, which is going to be awesome. We had the worst flight here ever. What happened? Oh, my God, everything. So, for, like, we knew it was going to be Did you bad. die? No, thank God. <laughs> we knew it was going to be bad when we were on the jetway, and there was, like, a family with two of those fucking Escalade-sized strollers and four full-size bags, all of which they were trying to carry on, hmm. arguing with the boarding agent that they should be able to carry all this shit on. Then we noticed these people had a toddler. And that toddler was across the aisle from us and never shut up the whole six hours. Was it the screaming not shut up or the talking not shut up? Yes. Oh. I had a broken tray table. There was a flight attendant about the size of Thanos. And I'm not saying the dude was fat. I'm saying the dude was like six foot six. Extra thick! Yeah, and just, like, big in every direction. And he body-checked me every time he went down the aisle. No matter how, like, I collapsed my collarbone. Didn't matter. Still got body-checked. It was, there was turbulence. It was just the little entertainment screens didn't want to work. Thank God I got Infinity War to play and I had Chris Evans. Otherwise, I don't know if I would have made it. Then I had a full-ass grown adult kicking me in the back for the whole flight. We were so happy to be on the ground. <laughs> I, I'm not sure, but I, do, I flew back in my college days. I remember it wasn't always quite so terrible. Am I wrong? No. And we've, we've had good, like, Dan has really good travel karma. I think what happened is my entropy field has you finally eaten his travel karma. Because I exist inside a personalized entropy field. I just break shit by being near it. And I think it finally, my entropy field finally swallowed Dan's travel karma field. Because we've had really good luck up until this flight, but it was just like it all came due. Hey, hey, Tara, did did the big flight attendant, the, the Thanos guy, did, did he try to keep your baggage in perfect balance? <laughs> he didn't keep shit in perfect balance. <laughs> He almost knocked me out of the fucking plane. Uh, oh, I'm not sure that's true. Well, it felt like he was trying. Well, that's hype. And that's, he was he, like, he was very nice. And I'm sure like he's he was just a big dude. This dude should be a linebacker. Like, he was just a big fucking dude. And the aisles like this wide. So I'm sure he didn't mean it. But I'm like. When you're getting body checked about every five minutes for six hours, that person's intentions start to not matter to you. <laughs> you start to not care if they don't mean it. Well, with that having been said, let's get on to the horrible shit. Yay! Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And crazy. just to reiterate, we are fast approaching the holidays. As is our want here on Radio Dead Air, we have our special holiday feature. Goat watch! Da -da 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 -da. I need I, I need to get graphics made for this. Your irk makes noises, Dan. <laughs> I oh, it's not it's not clickable links though. That's some bullshit. <laughs> I need to. <gasps> I need I need to to get like a I need I need like to make a goat watch graphic. Yes. Like you CNN should. or some. Is shit. there like a live stream of the goat? There is. That's what I just sent you. We are checking in on the goat. The gobla so goat. Dan uses Windows. Which I'm still probably saying wrong. I even looked at the pronunciation. Like the an apple, like a like a fucking caveman. Next time, just let me know and I can help you click a link. 
You go sit down. <laughs> that shade, though. Um, Dan hit happy hour at the hotel bar really hard <laughs> when he finished work today. So, uh... As uh, as you may be aware, the gavel goat is a holiday tradition in Gavla, Sweden. YouTube physics pronounced Yavla. Yavla? Anyway. Yes. Well, it's a holiday tradition in Yavla, Sweden, where they erect a large straw goat, and every year people try to burn down the large straw goat, and it becomes a battle. So we are checking in. It has been up since December 1st. It is December 10th now. And this is a live stream, though it's very slow moving. You can't see a live stream of the straw goat, not on fire. Yay. So that is, we are, we are checking in. The goat is not on fire yet. Um, yeah, I, I posted a joke about the Avengers and Thor thinking the goat was for him. And apparently it really is. I didn't know that. It's it's Thor's goat. Apparently, goats are associated with Thor in some way. Yes, he has he has yeah. two goats and a ch two goats drive his chariot. I forget the name. So of the that's goats, apparently but... why it's a big giant goat. I'm sure but someone I mean, in... joke, like the Avengers were driving home for Christmas, and Thor was like, "Oh yes, it's lovely. My people erect a giant goat for me to strike with lightning to keep them warm." And everyone's like, "Thor, no!" I'm sure I'm sure someone in the channel will immediately pipe up with the names of there you go. Uh, <laughs> Tanzgrenir is one of them. And someone's going to come up with the name of the other. Just people automatically know. Yeah, these are the names of Thor's goats. He's just the I thing mean, we how, know. who doesn't know the name of Thor's know, goats? There's the name of Thor's goats? Merle and Tanzgrenir. <laughs> Merle. Yeah. What is he from South Norway? Yes, <laughs> but in Norwegian, Merle has about 16 letters, and half of them are silent. Mer Merle is a haggard goat. Yeah. Ah, Tansgrenir and Tansnostur. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Merle. <laughs> Merle. All right, now we'll move on to our first actual story this week. Um, kids say the darndest things. Like, uh, they're very honest. They're very, uh, they, 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 they don't hold anything back. It's one of the reasons I don't have them. And um, this little girl didn't hold anything back. Uh, told to clean her room, nine-year-old girl instead calls 911 on her parents. Imco Ontario, an incident that occurred over the weekend, has prompted Ontario Provincial Police, uh, Provincial, 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 there we go, say words, to issue a reminder to parents and caregivers to talk to children about making 911 calls. The uh, police Norfolk detachment said that on Saturday, officers respond, responding to a 911 call rushed off to a residence in Simcoe, Ontario. But when they got there, they found out that a nine-year-old girl had dialed 911 because she was upset that a parent had asked her to clean up her room. Someday that lady's going to call 911 over something at McDonald's and she'll be back. I, this happened to me actually almost. My, my nephew, my friend, my nephew, before I lived with him, I was babysitting for the day. So I think he was about seven and a picture that my sister had hung up fell off the wall completely on its own. Like we literally heard a crash in the other room and went to investigate and a thing fell off the wall and a piece of a piece of it cracked and he wanted to fix it. And I said, no, we're going to wait for mommy and daddy to come home. I'm sure it's very expensive. Like, and he was very upset that I wouldn't let him fix it. So he grabbed the phone and told me that he was going to call the police and have me sent to the bad aunt jail. Because I wouldn't let him fix the picture. <laughs> How do you always have a story? I don't know. Just lucky, I guess. I, it, it's just fucking kids, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I just love that the kid thought suddenly there was a way to solve this problem forever. If mommy's in prison, she can't make me clean my room. I know, right? I've said this quite often. Having a child is like having a little mad person. Yeah. They don't conform to the rules... 
that all the rest of us do. Their thought processes are alien. They're little tiny crazy people. And we have to, to just kind of, but all right, I've, I've just wondered how many steps ahead this kid was thinking, nine years old. And nine year old is not that small. When I was nine years old, I could no. reason pretty well. Yeah. When I did live with Patrick, he was nine, and they're pretty fucking slick, man. So this one, it's just be an asshole. You call 911 on your, you made me clean my room, you're going to jail. Because what I the story to... didn't include was when the police got there. She was in her room doing that scene from Fight Club. <sniffs> Fucking Mommy, kids. no. Fucking kids, man. They just... will snitch you right the fuck out. There's, I don't... There's, uh, anyone says... I came, I came this close to being sent to bad aunt jail, which is probably a thing in my sister's neighborhood. It's, what, when, it... when are you having kids? Fucking never! Nope. Has cats. It's bad enough Simba bit the cat sitter when he came to meet him. Yay! Yeah. Asserting dominance. Co Simba. Thank God we have a really wonderful and experienced cat Simba cat sitter who took it in stride. He was like, "Yeah, I've been bit a bunch of times. Just give me some peroxide. It'll be okay." Like I just I just love that that Simba was like, "Just so you know, who's in charge of this motherfucker?" Kinda, yeah. We'll be okay. You got your, you know who's running things. We'll be fine. And like Peggy loves the cat sitter. She's learned that like him being there means treats because he gives them all treats. So she loves him. Oh, wait, he can't hear the, you were, you were saying the word. I was like, he can't, oh, wait, he can't hear you <laughs> saying the word. I was like, don't do that. Treats. So Peggy has come to associate Nate with treats. So she loves him. Dottie. He just takes our word that Dottie exists because he's he's met her once. And that's because we had her in a carrier. And uh, Simba, we're working on. So this next story, Simba, this, this doesn't really trust people. You know, lots of people that they when they put stories up for me, they, they often say, oh, look, Nash, here's one from my neck of the woods. Like they're almost proud of this shit. <laughs> and they shouldn't be. No, you shouldn't be. And I know how they feel because, hey, guess what? Here's one from my neck of the woods. Ah, uh, tis the season for arson. South Carolina man goes on Christmas decoration burning spree. Summer. Okay, you need to take that shit to Norway. We don't do that here. It's not acceptable That's here. Shit. Look, dude, you get on a plane, go burn that goat. People are going to cheer your ass on. You'll still go to jail, but, you this know. This is America. This is America. A Somerville man is charged with arson after police said he burned down the Christmas decorations in a suburban Charleston neighborhood. Authorities arrested Cameron Lewis Brown. Uh, Br bon. Sorry. Bon. Cameron Lewis Bon, 29, otherwise known as old enough to know better. After receiving a call Friday afternoon about a person setting fire to the property of multiple neighbors in the Arbor Walk community in Somerville. Police say Bond lit up a snowman decoration that was in the front yard of a home, was detained for burning Christmas decor at another home. Somerville Fire Rescue was also attempted to put out a house fire that Bond allegedly set. <laughs> Sorry, that was the laptop telling me the battery's low. I, why? Baum was not charged with grinchery. It's the actual last line of the article. <sighs> why, though? Like, I just, well, okay, let's have a look at the guy. We got a, We got a mugshot. There's a mugshot. I mean, Fox News is going to be psyched. There finally really is a war on Christmas. I know, right? It's a one-man war. <laughs> it's, kind of a, it's kind of a Liam Neeson war. <laughs> but nonetheless. Thank you. Sorry. I just... I just... <laughs> what the... The fu The fu I am, there are sometimes I feel neither holly nor jolly at this time of year. I get yeah. that. That's fine. 
But never once have I decided, you know what? Fuck Christmas. Everything Basically, burns. I burn it all down. Everything burns. That's... I... Today's the day I burn everybody's fucking Christmas. Ooh, you made it brighter. There we go. Sorry. Was that you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's Sorry. power saving when, when the computer has is off of oh. charged. Because yeah. it went to like romantic lighting. I did, who burns Frosty down? Come on. I mean, they kind of did it in Frozen. They did a whole song about it. That dude just looks so mad. Somebody burns my Christmas hippo. I'm busting skulls. He's Ugh. he's just so mad. Look at him. Like, what did Christmas do to you? I mean, okay, you didn't get your Red Rider BB gun. It's time to let that shit go. It is. You know who he looks like? Huh? He looks like if the if the fat redheaded kid from the Sandlot was Italian. I was just thinking that. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. He's the great Hambino. <laughs> oh no, oh, Tara. You don't say that out loud. That's not nice. Sorry. That's not I nice. mean he called himself that <laughs> in the movie. That was his professional wrestling name, the great Hambino. Just it we're gonna get YouTube complaints. I always get YouTube complaints. <laughs> yeah, she does. This week they're mad at me because I don't like beer. Well, to be fair though, you don't like beer. To be fair, though, who gives a shit? <laughs> I just, why the, the, why the Christmas decorations? Seriously. That's, that is just, that's just fucking mean. You're just a dick. That There's no good cause for that. I mean, it's not even for insurance purposes. No. Uh, you know, I, I get, I get arson for insurance purposes. There's a payoff there. That that's a crime that makes sense. Not a good crime. Yeah. Crime that makes sense. Just burning the fuck, burning Frosty the fuck down. There must Someone have been else's Frosty, no less. Not even your own Frosty. Yeah, somebody else's. There Get must have been frosty some frosty magic frosty. in that old straw. Oh God, I dying. <laughs> I'm fucking burning. Oh, jeez, why the fucking Frosty? I mean, maybe he's really into Jack Skellington? Just got it wrong? Either way, don't do that. Don't do That's that. shitty. Next one's from the UK, and oh, speaking of shitty. Wow. Fuck, this, this whole story is just... Um... If we could take fuck you and bottle it, That, that would be this story. I mean, haven't we? We called it Axe. No, that's that's no fuck you. No no one is fucking you. No, no that's not... Ha well, this this one no one's I'm fucking I'm sorry, it's fuck you, bro. Fuck you, bro. Okay, there bro you go. Made into Axe. Partygoer sparks bomb scare after ditching ISIS fancy dress suicide belt into a public bin. Really? Now I have to I have to translate briefly for people who are not from the UK. <laughs> a fancy dress party in the UK doesn't mean tuxedos and tails and and no. you know it means it's a costume party. That's what fancy dress it's it's a costume party. So this guy tuxedos and tails is just tea. Yeah, th there's a th there's there's the device that was found. It actually looks plausibly real and here's his costume uh fancy dress outfit sparked a major bomb scare after a reveler reveler dressed as a jihadi dumped a fake suicide vest in a high street bin full-scale bomb no disposal operation was carried out in wellingsboro north northamptonshire on sunday after one careless party goer careless Ditch the suspect device while on a night out. Crack troops from RAF carried out a controlled explosion and sealed off streets around the town center after the fake suicide vest was spotted by horrified shoppers. 
They are looking for this dude. They don't know who he is. You still there, Tara? Yeah. Your screen froze, but, you know, hotel oh, Wi-Fi. No. I'm here. There you go. Oh, the camera's working now. Okay. 10 to 1, this guy is a Brexit voter. Agreed. So th they're looking for him right now. If you are in the UK watching this and you know this thing. Find um, him. Like, yeah. Because I want to show you this. This is, this is, if you came along down the street and found that sitting. That shit would make me nervous. Yeah. I mean, probably not him because he's seen bombs before and he'd be like, that doesn't look like a bomb, but I haven't seen a bomb before. I could say pl it could pos plausibly because that's a real cell phone attached to it. Those are real yeah. wires. Um, I could be plausibly think, oh, shit. Because, yeah. And, like, why? There are so many costumes in the world. Yeah, I want to know. So things you could be for the fancy dress party. But you choose guy who's in ISIS. Yeah, the guy next to him is dressed up. That That's that's Braveheart, which, okay. Yeah. Mm, if you like. Some William Wallace. All right, sure. But... The... The, the the whole what the fuck man? Were you, you chose guy from ISIS? You go. What do you think people at the party are gonna say? Well, are you okay? I'm just. I automatically guarantee you, whether you're out looking for women or men, you're going home alone that night. Cause nothing, nothing says don't touch me and my fun parts quite like someone dressed as a terrorist. I don't know, man. Like, there, there, there's a lot of racist as fuck Americans with kids. Hey. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's true. There's, there's a lug for every nut. But anyway, if you have seen this man and you are in. The UK. Um, yeah, if you know you who knows this man, punch him in the face. Well, yeah, but after that, please call your uh, local yeah. law enforcement officials and let them know this jackass needs to be in a jail cell for a little while. Like, how stupid do you have to be to be like, all right, I'm done with my fake bomb now. I'm just going to throw it in this trash outside the Tesco. <sighs> how fucking stupid do you have to be? And the, the cops don't like false alarms. They really don't. No. It's not fun. They get kind of cranky on those. And if you're the kind of person that complains about your taxes, that's why they go up. Yeah, especially it gets real pricey when they have to pull out that damn robot. That's expensive. Yeah. When they got to pull the robot out, the meter is running. Yeah. That shit's pricey. Mm. Fucking idiot. Okay. Oh, well, okay. This is an expected idiot. It's Florida. Um. All right. Thunder. No. Okay. Ghost. Damn it. <coughs> yes, I know Tara's frozen again. She's on hotel Wi-Fi. How do you guys not grasp this? <coughs> it, we're lucky she's even managed to be here at all. Just bear with it. Sorry, guys. Shit, welcome. This, do you do you not know what a live show is? Have you never been to a live? Just completely live, fun. everybody. Anyway, um, I have driven cross country, and I mean like fifteen hundred miles with a cat. That's one of those instances where you properly secure your animal. Yeah, because we drove a miracle to Missouri and back. Cats don't like cars. It's not their natural habitat. No. Um, as far as their- I'm sure six people are going to tell us about their cat that loves cars. Some do. The norm, they don't. As far as they're concerned, the the apocalypse is upon them. <laughs> yes. And they, they are going- appreciate it. They are going to sing a song of woe. They don't want to stick their head out the window. Nope. 
and stick their tongue out. They want to sing you the lament of the dying. And if you don't keep them in their carrier, they're going to go all over the place, including dangerous places, because the world is ending. Now, let's take that and apply that from a common household cat to a more exotic animal, like a lemur. Exotic animal surprise trooper during I-4 traffic stop. <coughs> Seminole County, Florida. Routine traffic stop on I-4 quickly turned into a circus. Really? When a lemur crawled out of the back of a trailer and appeared to start messing with troopers. <laughs> That's so cute, though. Well, troopers stopped a pickup that was hauling a trailer last Saturday. The back of the trailer was throwing sparks as it dragged along the highway. All right, that's not cute. Man behind the wheel of the truck had been driving erratically and hitting other cars. Moments that's not cute either. Moments earlier on SR SR four seventeen. Uh, when the man finally pulled over on I four in Seminole County, dash cam video of the uh, Florida Highway Patrol showed a lemur peeking its head out of the top of the trailer to see what was going on. Then jumped to the ground, hopped down on all around the troopers who were trying to deal with the driver. Quote, I don't know what it is. It came from the trailer. <laughs> um, That's the worst horror movie ever. It came from the trailer. Highway Patrol said the driver, Shane Taylor, told troopers the lemur's name is Miko. And to be careful because, oh. and to be careful because quote, she bites. Oh, good. Taylor also told troopers he has about 130 animals. Okay, well, that's too many pets. Troopers attempted to lure, lure the lemur didn't go well at first. One grabbed the only food he had in his cruiser, some grapes, to catch Miko. After about 15 minutes, troopers finally pulled her to safety. Inside the trailer, troopers found even more exotic animals, a tortoise, a parrot, a goat, and a punchy wallaby that was slightly injured and shaken up from the melee. Taylor faces, Ooh, several wallaby. Taylor faces several charges, including DUI and hit and run. Fish and wildlife conservation are caring for the animals. Channel 9 visited Taylor's home. From the road, they could see an emu, a lizard, a donkey, a goat, and a llama. Dude. Okay. Dude, you are not Michael Jackson. No. You do not have Michael Jackson money. You do not own the Neverland Ranch. And you cannot afford the handlers for these animals. I'm almost certain. When? Because your trailer was dragging on the ground. When, when, when you hear, there's a movie. It's called We Bought a Zoo. Yeah. You didn't, you kind of skipped to the last step without the middle part there. If, if oh, these are not pets. These are not pets. You cannot. And you have can't. You watched, have you ever watched Doctor K's Exotic Vet? I heard it. It's on National Geographic Wild. It's I, I love this show. I will watch this show like over like six episodes in a row. And she's a vet that it's exactly what it sounds like. She's a vet that specializes in exotic animals, and a lot of people have these as pets. They take a lot of care. Like, they're not... There's a reason the common pets are the common pets. Because they're easy for humans to care for and handle. Yeah. Like, she has, like, lemurs as patients and stuff like that. She has she gets a lot of turtles and tortoises. And if you know how to care for them, they can be great pets. You don't need one of each. They're not Pokemon. You don't need one of each. Nope. You're and not you Noah. Noah. Definitely not taking good care of them. You're just not. If you have that many, you're just fucking not taking good care of them. Unless the sky parted open and someone told your ass to build a big boat. Which in this day and age is possible, I will give you. I'm thinking it wasn't this asshole. No. Although if I recall, Noah was a, a drunk drunkard. Too. Yeah. So maybe. This is the worst version of Noah's Ark. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's you know, while Barnum and Bailey did take their circus on the road, not like this. Mm -mm. This is not. Oh, for fuck's sake! I mean, you couldn't. Oh, Wallaby. I know. Just fucking why? 
Why did why did everybody where, where the fuck were you going? Yeah. With everybody. With all your animals just stuffed in a trailer that was dragging on the ground. Come on, gang, we're going to McDonald's. While you were drunk. Actually, if it was it's probably going to McDonald's. Probably. Um Well here's a here's one from the Department of Fuck You Jail. Uh this has been happening quite regularly. I thought that was the last one? No, this this one's better. This has been happening quite regularly in fast food establishments. I think we we've mentioned this once or twice before, but it's happened it's there have been stories like this quite often. Uh I don't know what's going on here. Well, actually I kind of do. Um Ecstasy pill found wrapped in Sonic in Boy's Sonic Burger. Taylor, Texas. Illegal drugs served in a fast food burger led to the arrest of three Sonic employees in Taylor. Taylor Police Department reported when a family went to a Sonic drive-in Thursday night and ordered some food. When they got their order, the boy said the family's 11-year-old daughter unwrapped her 4-year-old brother's burger and found a pill in the wrapping. Police said the girl initially mistook the pill for candy, but her parents suspected something worse. The family drove to the Taylor Police Station, where officers said a field test determined the pill was ecstasy. Police went that explains their commercials. Police went to the restaurant to investigate, ended up arresting three Sonic employees. Um, in possession of marijuana, four outstanding warrants, theft by check, driving an invalid license, and bond forfeiture. Uh... <laughs> times at the sonic well that that's kind of what's going on here um this is this is a way that dealers can kind of supplement their their income um you go to the drive through and you place an order with a nudge nudge wink wink and they know to drop the drugs in your order when you're when you're leaving how do they pay you? They, they they pay you just a little bit extra at the drive through window. And if anybody sees the transaction at a distance, it looks perfectly innocent. So you're telling me these people had to be smart enough <clears throat> to make change yeah. for a food order and then an extra transaction out of the same wad of cash, but they were so fucking stupid they put, gave ecstasy to a four-year-old? Yes. I'm not saying these people are geniuses, and I'm pretty sure they didn't invent this. Hence why I right. say... Well, hence why I say this has been happening a lot. A lot of news stories pop up where people are finding drugs in their fast food. This is kind of a thing now. So they didn't invent this scam, but... um have been watching too much Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 because if police are watching, police aren't paying attention to this because it just looks like, oh, you gave them their food. They're not inside the restaurant. Yeah. They're, so it just looks like you gave them their food. And when they ask so for like, do you have to know a code word? Yeah. Something like, you know, um, double pickles with onions or something or some weird outlandish or like horseradish or some bullshit. And what if you get the new guy and he actually just gives you double pickles and onions? Well, they have to know your shift. People and then know you give him a $100 bill. Well, yeah, that could happen, too. <laughs> that could happen, too. But That seems like an inefficient way to do business. But then, the, then there's the, you come up with the instance where someone actually orders the outlandish thing right. genuinely. Yeah. And, and there's like... That uh, bonus side of ecstasy. Yeah. I'm still boggled by, like, I learned how to make change without a computer telling me how much change, and I would still find that hard <laughs> if I had to deal with the extra money but make the proper change for the transaction but keep enough back. Like, that would really hurt my drive through times. <laughs> but these fucking idiots can manage it? Well, I, I think originally some fucking idiots did manage it. But then other people heard about it and they're like, that sounds easy. Let's I do, do it. I can do that. 
It's sort of like this is like the the uh, this is like not even this is like the the Walmart brand cola version of the scam. You know, yeah, Pepsi and Coke know what they're doing. Yeah. Like when I was in the hospital and they kept giving me Shasta. Shasta, yeah. It's like I didn't even know they made this shit anymore. Doctor Thunder, that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah, that, this is the Doctor Thunder version of this crime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we can do that, man. It's not pro. It's it's easy. Yeah, how hard can it be, man? How hard can it be, man? You know, someone's toddler is tripping balls. <laughs> God, thank God not. And thank God the kid asked because, like, you just did a whole lot of Rangoon about how kids think medicine is candy. Yup. Like my sister well, I didn't had do it, but... stomach pumped as a kid because she ate a bunch of my mom's antacid. I didn't do it. I didn't. I didn't do that. Greg and Trent did it. By the way, you should go like and subscribe to Isle of Rangoon. Good people. But yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. You played it. I played it. Yeah, but I didn't make it. They made it. They made funny thing. But yeah, it's it's. Thank God the kid was like, "This is some yeah. funny looking candy." Hey, mom, have you seen this candy before? Because there's a lot of kids that would have just been like, "Ooh, candy," and eaten it. <laughs> and then your four year old's tripping balls. Then your four year old's dead. <laughs> And then the charges, they get a lot more serious. Yeah, that's, that's, that is the not fucking around jail time then. You fucking idiots. No, man, it'll be fine. We can do this. No. Now, I cannot say for absolute certainty that's exactly the scenario that happened here, but that's kind of been a thing. It's yeah. a, it's... Welcome I to... I mean, maybe it was something innocent, like it just fell out of the kid's mouth onto the burger. Welcome to the war on drugs. Um, finally tonight, I want to make it clear, I try to refrain from doing politics on what the fuck is wrong with you. Because <laughs> this goes on YouTube. Well, not just that, but because um, I'm trying to do funny, stupid things, and when yeah. the politics are stupid, it's not so much funny, it's, it's a deep, deep dread that sinks in my gut that the people in control are complete morons. Yeah. However, this headline alone broke me because when I realized this was completely fucking serious, this was being covered in a nationally or international politics website, reputation, all that shit, this is a thing that happened. This is where we are. This headline. Steve Bannon causes robot sex conference to be canceled after protests erupt. Wow, even robots won't have sex with him? That's a fucking Mad Libs from hell. <laughs> even the ro even the sex robots won't put up with Steve Bannon. That's I, how bad. I don't know what the fuck happened. This, okay. That's how much of a sentient, cirrhosis infested liver that man is. I had to reread this shit, sir. I thought, I swear to God, I thought this was The Onion. <laughs> I, no, this is The Hill. Which is, I swear to God, when I first read this story, I thought this was The Fucking Onion. Since being fired by Donald Trump in August of 2017, Steve Bannon has been busy speaking at different conferences. Some of these conferences are staples for Republican figures, while others are just plain weird. Weirdest conference of all was the 4th International Congress on Love and Sex with Robots. Let's pause for just one second. The, not just the International Congress on Love and Sex with Robots, the 4th International Congress on Love and Sex with Robots. They're only going to get bigger. Like, this is the new reality. Bannon was tabbed to be the keynote speaker at the conference, which was merged with the Robot Sex Conference. Wait. Ace. Yeah, the Ace Conference. What's Ace? Um, that's a good question. I, I, it might be, uh, 
It doesn't. It, not bad. It doesn't reporting. tell you. Bad reporting. So he wasn't supposed to speak to the robot sex people. And yet he was going to be the keynote with a so. The announcement of keynote speaker led to immediate backlash. Speakers meant to appear si alongside Banna began to drop out of the conference. Peter Gray, a former Boston College professor who has to appear as a keynote speaker, said, Bannon's alt-right brand is personally odious to me and, more importantly, by association would work against my credibility and that of the causes to which I am passionately devoted. You got to read the next one, the next quote. I, I just... Just against his credibility and that of the causes to which I am passionately devoted, which is fucking robots! Well, maybe I'm trying to figure out what the other conference is. Catherine, I know ace is short for asexual, but I don't know if that's what this conference was about. And I feel like that's relevant. Uh, Catherine Neal, a game de developer, also took issues with ban and role in the conference. For a conference like this, the keynote is either a leading academic researcher or someone from industry who does relevant work. This is like inviting Ed Sheeran to keynote a microbiology conference. It's unfathomable. Ed Sheeran is furious at that con. <laughs> oh, advances in computer entertainment. Okay. Which makes even so, less sense. Yeah, why was Steve Bannon there? But at least those two things, I can see the crossover. I imagine a lot of people weren't happy at those events being combined. <sighs> but there's some, that, that Venn diagram crosses. But what the fuck was Steve Bannon doing there? <laughs> Lovinsexwithrobots.org noted on their website, lovinsexwithrobots.org. Not dot com, dot org. That's a non-profit. That's a non-profit. That's, they, 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 no one's paying them to fuck the robots. They're doing it out of charity. <laughs> Since the arrangement. I mean, I hear on Twitter all the time that that's how they're going to take down the feminists, by fucking robots instead. And what they don't seem to know is that the feminists are like, <laughs> you go ahead. We're cool. Since the, arrange, since the arrangements being made for both conferences were inexorably intertwined, we have had no alternative but to postpone the Congress on love and sex with robots. Do you see what you've done, Steve Bannon? Do you see what you've done? Now... Even the sex robots don't want you. Now, now, because of Steve Bannon, these people cannot gather from all over the world and come together to discuss ideas about fucking robots. Do you see what you've done, Steve Bannon? I gotta be honest, like, in general, you know that I am anti-robot. <laughs> but as robots go, I am pro-sex robot. As long as they're not sentient, because, you know. But if you have a non-sentient sex robot, I feel like that's just taking a whole thing out of the equation that's like taking a whole category of negativity out of the world. Like, you have a warm hole, you're happy, maybe you're not as angry at whatever gender is your preference. You're not lonely. Like, I, I'm anti-robot, but as robots go, I'm pro-sex robot. I'm okay with it. You want a sex bot? Get a sex bot. I just, I, I just, that I is... I really feel like it's kind of just one step up from a vibrator anyway. Steve Bannon has ruined robot fucking. Are you happy now, Steve Bannon? Are you proud of yourself? You've ruined robot fucking for everybody he this year. He will never be proud of himself. <laughs> and that's the problem. I mean, god damn. <laughs> to look at Steve Bannon and say, no, no, that guy will lower the prestige of fucking robots. We we don't want to be associated with that. We'd much no. rather be evolved, be, be, be known for sex robots than for Steve Bannon. Somebody, all the, somebody did a story, like a deep investigative story a few years back about the people that repair real dolls. Uh have like a lifetime warranty god those things are creepy as shit you think they're creepy as shit they had pictures of the of the condition in which they got sent in for repairs 
And it's one of the, it's the day I became pro sex robot because there's some fucked up people out there that want to rip your legs off while their dick is in you. And they have a real doll now. And I'm good with that. And even those people don't want to be on the same stage as Steve Bannon. <laughs> exactly. Oh. So that's, that's, that's the first thing we've learned this week. When the sex robot people don't want you around, maybe it's time to just pack it in. When the dudes who are dismembering their real dolls. Just pack it up, pack it in. Let me begin. Just um, go, go get a job at Walmart and leave us all alone, man. We've learned you need to be careful with your order at the drive through window or you might end up with a little <laughs> something extra. Now I'm concerned. <laughs> like, I need to know the Starbucks equivalent, because I have an involved <laughs> Starbucks order, and I don't need to get any accidental ketamine. It brings a, brings a whole new meaning to secret menu, doesn't it? Yes! We've learned uh, that um, you are not a zoo. You yourself, personally, you are not a zoo. No. And I want Steve Bannon to speak at a furry convention. Given oh. all the Nazi furry icons on Twitter, there's some crossover there that... Oh, no, no. The furry community hates the Nazi furries. It's it's a oh, whole really? thing. Okay. I'm not a furry expert, so good you, to know. You, you know, like, how um, there's, like, in Vampire, there's clans and in Tidribu? Yeah. Nazi furries are furry in Tidribu. <laughs> good to know. Okay. There you go. Just so you know. Because I've seen a lot of icons of, like, happy-looking foxes in full fucking Hugo Boss fury. Yeah, that, that's, like, that's... That's that's a thing, man. Tell me about that. That's a furry in Tidribu. Okay. That's... The, the <laughs> um, we've learned that uh, y you need to take... You can have a it's very... called the Third Reich. That's amazing. Yeah. You, you can have very, very articulate costumes sometimes. Hey, cosplay, have fun. Uh, but you also need to have taste. That, yeah. That comes in handy. You need to not be a racist piece of shit. Um, and you need to not dump your fake bomb in the trash. <laughs> Abstruse just said, so we just use Vampire the Masquerade to explain Nazi furries. I hate 2018. <laughs> yes. If um, you've seen Vampire Fifth Ed... You'd hate it even more. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we've learned that, uh, y you know what? Y you're not required to like Christmas, but y you're not also allowed to burn it down. No. And, yeah, that's, I'd say you get a lump I of coal in your stocking. I hate talk like a pirate day. I hate talk like a pirate day. Everybody on my Facebook sounds like a fucking moron for a whole day. I think it's the stupidest shit ever. You know what I do? I keep my fucking mouth shut because people are having fun. You don't set pirates on fire. I don't set pirates on fire. <laughs> like, I don't like it. I think it's stupid. I think it's annoying, but I'm not going to be a spoil sport about it because other people are happy. And fin finally this week, we've learned um, nine-year-olds are the devil. <laughs> I think that might be a little general, but... <clears throat> Sure. Nine-year-olds are... They will snitch you the fuck out, though. Even for, But that's not illegal! Telling you to clean your room is not the fuck illegal. In child logic, it is. <clears throat> In child logic, that's Gitmo. 